Hello, welcome to the video lecture series on contact mechanics in the course M7033T Scientific Computing with Applications in Tribology. My name is Andreas Angest and I work in the Division of Machine Elements here at Lulu University of Technology. And this is the first part of the third video lecture on contact mechanics algorithms with a brief recap on contact mechanics, complementarity problem, and then a, a quite large chunk where you will learn about Lemke's algorithm to solve linear complementarity problems. So for this video lecture I recommend you first of all to look into the course compendium which pretty much summarizes everything uh, but then also there is some specific papers that I think may be worth looking into and one of those is the one by Tian and Bouchard, and the other one is the one by Stanley and Kato, which I have listed here. So the outline of this uh, presentation is that we first, very, very quickly, have a recap on the complementarity problem, and then there's a little bit longer section on Lemke's algorithm, which can be used to solve what comes next linear complementarity problems and uh, then we have a variational principle based approach which we will also connect to later on in the course when we look look so the quick recap you remember complementarity problem by now wherever there is pressure the gap must be zero and where the gap is non-zero, where well, there is a gap, the pressure must be zero. So we know this problem very well now, uh, but how do we solve it? So Lemke's algorithm is one example of, of all this. Complementarity problems. So in a more mathematical sense we, we know that we have two dependent variables, we let's call them uh, nu and eta and they then have the following properties that both these complementary variables they must be positive uh, or greater uh, greater or equal to zero and the product of them must always be zero this is one way of formulating it uh, so First of all, both variables are non-negative everywhere and one variable uh, is positive, then the other one must be zero. So precisely the complementarity problem that we can see in contact mechanics. If these complementary variables are linearly related, so for example if we can pose this linear relationship uh, where nu is just a times eta plus b then we have a linear complementarity problem, an LCP. The Lemke's algorithm is a pivoting algorithm which can be used to solve LCPs and we will illustrate here the solution procedure when we apply Lemke's algorithm to solve an R2 example. So we have the, the linear complementarity problem which in R2 means that nu is a, a 2 by 1 vector or 1 by 2 vector, it's a vector valued uh, dependent variable. The same with eta, it's also vector valued which will be very convenient obviously later on when we apply this on discrete contact mechanics problem, discretized contact mechanics problem and then this the A and the B are 2 by 2 and 2 by 1 matrix and vector respectively and uh, the other conditions of course means just that all these eta 1 and 2, uh, nu 1 and 2 must be positive everywhere and, uh, and that the product of both pairs must be zero. So it's a dot product there. So 
one thing to note here is that if all the components of B, i.e. B1 and B2, are positive, then the solution is that eta1 and eta2 are both zero and B is actually, or nu is actually B. And it can be obtained by just setting eta equal zero. So, let us apply Lemke's algorithm to solve the following example problem. The 2 by 2 matrix A is just this one, and the 2 by 1 vector is just this one. Lemke's algorithm, it starts by rewriting the system uh, on, on another form. So we prolong or what you say V with a, a multiplication by an ident identity matrix and then we move uh, the other dependent uh, variable part A eta to the left hand side and then uh, we have B left on the right hand side. When we do this uh, we do that because we want to construct a tableau and it will be a tableau as we do in Gaussian elimination, as you may have now uh, understood. So, this tableau in this specific case, it would summarize this data. I mean, we have the identity matrix for V1 and V2, and then we have the, the matrix minus A. <laughs> if you like, because we have minus a eta now uh, in front of eta 1 and eta 2 and then on the right hand side we just have b. Now we will introduce some definition, definitions and uh, a basic variable. It is a column identified as a unit vector in Rn, well obviously R2 in this example, which means that new one and new two are considered basic variables in this case. Non-basic variables, uh, they are the other variables and they are due to the complementary, condi complementary condition set to zero when we have a feasible basis. And what is a feasible basis then? Well, it is a basis in R2 which makes Bi non-negative everywhere. So, uh, when we have Bi positive or non-negative, then we know that the solution can be obtained by just specifying the non-basic variable, variables as zero, and then the, the result is just B. So, initialization. We add an auxiliary variable and then we will pivot to obtain a feasible basis. Because obviously this is not a feasible basic basis as B is not positive. So, when we have done that, we will perform pivoting and, and in that, by that, obtain a basics without the auxiliary variable where bi are also greater than c. This initialization, it looks like this. So we add a column with all minus ones for an auxiliary variable, which we will call eta naught. Uh, and we can see here in the system. So in this way, we can perform ordinary Gaussian operations that makes eta naught a unit vector in Rn. And then by that, it will be by definition a basic variable. Uh, but we also want that bi is positive at the same time. 
and it's easily done by by the addition of this auxiliary variable and this is known as pivoting here now pivoting row k with column r will consist of two types of gaussian order operations one is the multiplication of the pivoting row k by 1 over the element in that row uh, r k j because that will mean that we have a new uh, unity element at that position in the matrix we, we obtain or in the tableau we obtain and then we can subtract the non-pivoting rows by uh, well r r q i then yeah r q j then because we are pivoting with respect to column j and then times the 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 new row uh, times the uh, coefficients in the new row which i listed here all of them by by putting a star on the index j so each of the indices in the pivoting non pivoting row should be multiplied by the value of, of the coefficient in the pivoting row which has been normalized okay uh, it's easier easier uh, done than said so let's uh, do it we pivot row 1 with respect to column 3 that means that we multiply row 1 with 1 over my, minus 2 because minus 2 is just the, the coefficient uh, or element r13 and then by this we will obtain a unity value there So pivoting row K, remember, consists of, of two operations. So we have done the first one, and then we need to do the second one, to subtract the row. After having performed the first step, uh, we have the first row looking like this. And now we will perform the second step which is just to subtract this non-pivoting row with the with the r to three times the new row <laughs> elements so what we do here as i mean it's again easily more easily done than said every element in row number two is just subtracted by the new element from row number one. And this leads to this new system. So in the example we saw where we were pivoting row one with respect to column three, we had a new system in which we didn't have a feasible basis because B would remained uh, negative uh, so what we want to do really in in Lemke's algorithm is, is to perform what we call an initialization to obtain a feasible basis where B is positive and uh, we do that by pivoting with respect to the complementarity uh, the, the auxiliary variable eta zero so we would like to, to do this, perform this, and we would like that uh, B was positive. It's not uh, sure we may obtain this, but uh, let's see. So we perform the gauss jordan operation, which we list here, and then we have the new system looking like this. So B is positive, but we have not a feasible basis yet because we have only one, uh, uh, one 
base vector, unit vector in R2, in, in V2, in the new two variable. So what happens now if we want to get rid of, of uh, the one here? Since we want eaten on to be basic, we need a zero in row two of column five. And to do this, we multiply uh, multiply the first new row with the uh, R the element R25, which is just minus one, and then we subtract this from the row two. So we we perform the operation as seen here. We have row 2 and then we subtract minus 1 times row, uh, row 1 from it. The beauty of this operation is obviously that we kept the second element in, in uh, V2 unchanged so it's still a basic variable and we now have a zero in the second row of eta node, which makes this one a basic uh, variable. We also see that B is positive everywhere, so we have completed our initialization since new two and eta node are basic variables because BIs are non-negative. So next step is now to obtain a basis without eta node. So where eta node is non-basic. The step after the initialization is now consisting of entering and removing variables in an order uh, which, which uh, maintains B positive uh, and results in that we have a basis without the auxiliary variable eta naught. Now the definitions entering and removing means that if we enter a variable that means that we choose its column as a pivot. If we look at what we have done so far we notice that uh, we don't have a solution for a system where new 1 and new 2 are basic because then the system looks like this and we have a negative B. We have also seen that if we have a feasible basis including the auxiliary variable uh, then the system looks like this. Okay, so we have in initialized the system So, we must now pivot in some way to enter a new variable that generates a new basis without eta node. Why is preserving uh, B positive? In our initialized system, new one is a non-basic variable and non-basic variables, they are set to zero when we have a feasible basis. So pivoting with the column for these non-basic variables complement, complementary variable which would be eta1 will not affect the complementarity condition so we will preserve that uh, new one eta1 one is zero since we have set the non-basic variable new one to zero. And pivoting with respect to a certain column is defined as entering the variable of that column. So pivoting with respect to column 3 means that we enter eta1. And we recall that this pivoting operation is two Gauss-Jordan operations. Uh, and the first one is to multiply the pivoting row K by 1 over RKJ, where 
k is the row number and j is the column number and then we obtain the new row with an element on kj equal 1. Then we subtract this non-pivoting non row, in this case just one, but in a general case it can be many of them of course, and minus one, uh, with our qj times the new row, times the element values from the new row. To ensure that we have bi non-negative, we have to choose the row k with a minimum non-negative ratio between bk and the value in the pivoting column 3 at that row. So if we consider row 1, k is 1, then we have b equal to 3 and e to 1 is equal to 2 and we have 3 halves which is 1.5 as the ratio between them. If we take the next row, we have 4 and we have 3, and therefore the ratio is 4 thirds, which is 1.33333, which is less than 1.5, and, and we should pivot with respect to row 2 to maintain a positive bi. When we do, we multiply row 2 by 1 third. To obtain the element in, in uh, column 3 at row 2 equal 1. Then we subtract 2 times the new row from row 1 to get a 0 in the first element of eta 1 and then we obtain the following system. We still have a feasible basis and we have new 1 and new 2 as non-basic variables and eta 1 and eta nod as basic and this is the reason why we're not happy yet because eta nod is the auxiliary variable which we should try to remove from the system and uh, by continuing pivoting so that we get a feasible basis without it. Okay, but now in this system new 2 is also a non-basic variable which means that we can enter its complementary variable eta 2 and therefore we should pivot with respect to column 4 which is the column for eta 2. And since the smallest non-negative ratio between the values of B and the values of the elements in uh, column R is found in row 1, the smallest non-negative ratio. This is the row we should pivot with respect to. So we pivot with uh, row 1 with respect to column 4, first step, just dividing all the values in row 1 with one third as that is the element uh, of, of the, fir the first uh, row in that column. We obtain this system and then we subtract uh, two thirds, we subtract minus two thirds times row 1 from row 2 and then we get a zero in the second uh, row of column 4 so we have made eta nod a basic variable and now this means that we have a feasible basis without eta nod since both elements of B are positive and we can read the solution directly from the system since we just set the non-basic variables uh, new 1 and new 2 to 0 and then we read eta 1 and eta 2 from the system but uh, 
Uh, now, do not be confused. We, typically, when we do uh, Gauss elimination, we should have uh, shifted shift the columns here so we had the first uh, one zero vector as the first vector and then the zero one vector as the second basis vector but now it's opposite so when we read the solution from the system we see that eta one is equal to two because it's in row two and eta two is equal to one as it is in row one and we can test this if the solution is correct just by testing if it satisfies the original system we had. So new one, new two should equal matrix A times eta one, eta two uh, plus uh, vector B. And it does, and you can verify it yourself. So in summary, Lemke's algorithm can be used to solve LCP problems. And it solves them by performing a finite number of pivoting operations like the Gaussian elimination. Needless to say, this is a very important property of a method, especially if you want to benchmark or test the, uh, and verify your method method. And in this course, a MATLAB routine based on the Lemke's algorithm will be provided through the course web, where you can actually find it also through MATLAB. Uh, file central if you search for my name Andreas Anquist and uh, uh, Yeah, well search for my name at MATLAB central <laughs>